Awesome. Hello and welcome to the 2024 Governor's Arts Awards. I'm Daniela Oropesa, your host for this evening's ceremony. The Mississippi Arts Commission has convened those who have made a significant impact on the arts and culture here in Mississippi since 1988. Each year we invite Mississippians to learn more about these creative people and institutions that have helped us learn more about ourselves and our rich artistic culture. Tonight's recipients join the ranks of more than 100 Mississippi artists, 
patrons, arts educators, arts leaders that have been recognized by Mississippi's governor and the Arts Commission over the past 36 years. Representing the Arts Commission is Executive Director David Lewis. Thank you, Daniela, for being here in this evening and for the warm introduction. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 2024 Governor's Arts Awards. I want to extend a welcome to Governor Tate Reeves and First Lady Ely Reeves. We're delighted to work with you. We are delighted to continue working with you on this program. As Executive Director of the Mississippi Arts Commission, it is my pleasure to lead our agency with the help of an unwaveringly dedicated staff and Board of Commissioners. Through its programming and grants, MAC serves to foster creativity that enhances the quality of life in Mississippi communities through statewide investment in the arts. One of those ways that we do this is through the Governor's Arts Awards. And I couldn't be more excited about this year's awards. We've made a few changes this year that our team has been working hard on. We have more live performances, and we can't wait for you all to experience the special talents of our recipients, from the beautiful artwork featured on your program, to the masterful puppetry that will be on display, to the sounds of two musical icons. One other change is through our video vignettes. Our production team, Mosaic Media, cost caught the vision that I cast for a more intimate and first-hand capture of our honorees. Given that you must be living and willing to come to the awards to receive the awards, I felt that we should hear from them directly. We should also hear from their friends and their nominators. Ron Rodenmeyer, Ellie, and myself visited all five recipients and spoke to them about the work that they do and the impact that it has. I think that you will enjoy these films that evoke the essence of each recipient. I've gotten to know each recipient over the past, the past year, and a few I already knew. In fact, 10 years ago, uh, this April, I wrote two articles in the MSU Reflector, both on Brent Funderburk and Cedric Burnside in the life section of the newspaper. Little did I know that a, I would be a part of honoring them this way only 10 years later. It takes a village to put on a show like this, and it would, I would like to take the opportunity to thank some of our key partners and our team members. First, thank you Governor Tate Reeves and First Lady Ely Reeves for joining us tonight and taking part in this important event. I would like to thank the two Mississippi museums and the Mississippi Department of Archives and History for hosting us. I would like to thank the Arts Commissioners who volunteer their time to guide the agency. And another big thanks to the Arts Commission staff for their hard work. Would all staff and board members please stand to be recognized. A special thanks to Senator John Horn for honoring our recipients on the Senate floor earlier today, and thank you to the Speaker and Speaker Pro Tem for joining us. Would all elected officials please stand to be recognized. Thank you for the work that you do for our state. A big thank you to our nominators who took the time to submit nominations for our five recipients. Without their nomination, we would not be able to honor our recipients this evening. Would all nominators please stand to be recognized? We also want to thank our presenting sponsor and partner, Mississippi Public Broadcasting. Each year, MPB's hard work ensures that the story of the arts in Mississippi is told all around our state and beyond its borders. <laughs> Finally, thank you to all who support the arts. It is my pleasure to serve the arts community of Mississippi. And now, please welcome the 65th governor of the state of Mississippi, Tate Reeves. Well, thank you, David, and, and good evening to everyone here tonight. It's great to be back at the Governor's Arts Awards. Ely and I are proud 
to join all of you tonight to celebrate the arts and to recognize an amazing group of honorees. Most of us are well acquainted with the multitude of great artists hailing from the great state of Mississippi. In fact, it sometimes feels like the arts are one of Mississippi's greatest exports. Tonight, we honor four incredible artists and one extraordinary location. And tonight, these five honorees are added to the list of people and places that have helped shape Mississippi's cultural legacy. We have two extraordinary musicians, a music hall of cultural and histor historical significance, a visual artist and educator, and a master puppeteer. The five awards being given tonight are a recognition of the indelible impact and influence that these honorees have had on our state. All five have strengthened Mississippi's reputation as an American center of artistic achievement. I hope their stories inspire Mississippians to tap into their creative spirit because it is the creative spirit that is vital to continue moving our great state forward. Innovators and creative thinkers are important to Mississippi's ever continuing story. We need to cultivate the ambassadors of tomorrow so they can showcase the greatness of our state in the example set by our honorees tonight. In closing, now that usually gets a standing ovation. <laughs> but in closing, it is my great privilege to recognize our award recipients at the 36th Governor's Art Awards. To our honorees, thank you for the gift of your time and thank you for the gift of your creativity. Our entire state is proud of you and our entire state is better off because of you. Congratulations again on this incredible accomplishment, and God bless. Thank you so much, Governor. Formally trained in Eastern Europe, our first recipient has brought an ancient theater tradition to countless Mississippi audiences and beyond. Peter Zapatal. Wow. Well, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you, Mississippi Arts Commission, for this wonderful, sweet award that I can receive surrounded by family and friends. Somewhere I heard, how can, I, how can one fly surrounded by turkeys? <laughs> well, all my life, I was flying surrounded by the eagles starting with my mother, who carried me in safety of her belly through concentration camps during World War II, to having a great childhood, even during the time when people around me were suffering under the times when we were building socialism, until my uncle, who fought in World War II, and was residing in New York, invited my family to join him and his family in America. It was 1967 when we arrived here, including my girlfriend, Yarmila, of three years by then, and we got married. That was the best move. I have made. Together we started to build puppets because I didn't know anything else. But Yarmila was great with sewing and would come up with the ideas. <coughs> I'm sorry, I came up with ideas <laughs> and she was able to bring them to reality <laughs> with some success in New York and inspired 
by the great success of Sesame Street, Mississippi ETV brought education to television here and offered us a new home. Again, at ETV, I was surrounded by egos like Henry Klein, who taught me about television, and Edward Cohen, who was a great scriptwriter. We were having the adventure of our lives. Then came others in the art department, Karen Wing, producer Diane Hartman, and staff members of what today is MPB. Then we started to tour Mississippi schools and share the art of puppetry with kids from Pascagoula to South Haven, from Meridian uh, to Vicksburg. Anywhere there were teachers who felt like we were doing something worthwhile for their students. Four of those who toured with me are here tonight, and I feel like this award is for them too, and also all the other eagles who flew with us. What a flight with these eagles it was. With the Armila, who took care of the kids, Audrey and David, who are here tonight, and two of our four grandchildren, Meyer and Ari, who are here too. Thank you very much for this wonderful, wonderful evening. Thank you. Now we would also like to recognize Yarmula Zapleta. Yarmula has been instrumental in creating these puppets used by Mr. Zapleta at Puppet Arts Theater and Mississippi Public Broadcasting over the past 40 years, including those used in the performances today. Places and spaces that support a community's culture are an important part of Mississippi's creative heritage. 100 Men Hall provides the community with a window to the past while supporting arts now and in the future. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Rachel Dangerman for the 100 Men Hall. Thank you everybody, thank you very much. Um, I had my pre-cry, I could cry again. Um, thank you Governor Tate and Reeves and First Lady and thank you David and the Mississippi Arts Commission, really appreciate it and everybody who came out tonight. Um, I've said everything about the hall that you need to know but I want you to know that there have been two times in my life where I've had divine clarity about what I was supposed to do. Um, one was in 2009 when I met my son, and the other one was in 2018 when I walked through the front doors of the hall. I just said, okay, I'm doing this, but I didn't know what this was. I really didn't understand the full force of how sacred, as Ann Madden said, this place is. Um, preservation is about putting a plaque outside on the Mississippi Blues Trail. It's about writing in magazines about it, but it's more for us. We believe that it's a living history. Um, the, if you look at the Chitlin Circuit, which is what we were a significant landmark for, uh, black American music didn't start then and it didn't end then. It continues to this day. And um, a lot of people say, you know, how do you do it? And I say, okay, let's see. First, I've had a lot of people who believed in me, and I'm very grateful for them. Second, you need resources, and they've got to come from many different places. A Mac Grant, for instance. Crazy resources, like guess who was the first act that played at the hall when I bought it? Cedric Burnside. <laughs> After he played, we decided to wear our hair the same way. We're family. 
Anyway, we also have Maurice Singleton, who is a, a, a gentleman who is in Bay St. Louis, but his family grew up in the hall. And so we have the great ability to pull in people like Maurice to help us tell our story. Because most importantly, we want to use art to tell our story. Art is a way to cut through and show you different sides of the same story so you really get it. So that's what we do. And we try to hire as much as possible artists of color. Uh, but the third thing, and this is something that's sort of intangible and you can't go buy it at the store or order it up, and that's magic. And there are some people who come into your life <laughs> I could cry, uh, who are magic. And um, Ann Madden is one of them. She was the first person who stalked me like a crazy person, trying to get me to do something at the hall. And I was like, why does this woman, I'm busy. And anyway, I met her, and then she brought Cedric, and the rest is history. So thank you so much. This place is so important. Thank you for helping us keep it alive. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree in the Burnside family. Our next recipient grew up hearing, learning, and playing the blues with his granddaddy, R.L., but has come into his own right as a Grammy Award-winning artist. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Cedric Burnside. <laughs> Well, how y'all doing? <laughs> um, first and foremost, I just like to thank uh, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, you know, just for giving me strength. You know, to do what I do giving me the talent. Um, I want to thank the Mississippi Art Commission for just recognizing, you know, Hill Country Blues and loving it enough to, you know, honor me with this beautiful award. Um, I want to thank my family for believing in me and just, you know, stand behind me and telling me when songs, oh, no, did it? You know, my daughter's <laughs> like, no, that, not that one, not that one, you know. But um, I just want to say uh, thank you guys so much uh, it's been a beautiful evening, and um, I'm really glad to be here this evening. Thank you. Mr. Burnside will play Toll on Thy Life, a new song from his upcoming release. But it can take a toll on their life, on their life, on their life, on their life, on their life. It can really take a toll on, it can really take a toll on their life, on their life. People will lie in your face to get things to go their way. Or even if they know it's not nice, but it can take a toll on their life, on their life, on their life, on their life, on their life. It can really take a toll on. It can really take a toll on their life, on their life. It 
It can really take a toll long. It can really take a toll on their life. On their life. On their life. On their life. It can really take a toll long. It can really take a toll on their life. On their life. Really take a toll on them. On their life. Really take a toll on them. On their life. Really take a toll on them. On their life. Really take a toll on them. On their life. It can really take a toll on. It can really take a toll on their life. Thank you all so much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Burnside. His latest album comes out on April 5th. Now is a perfect time for us to meet the musicians in the Arts Awards combo. Band leader and 2020 Governor's Award recipient, Raphael Sims on bass, Barry Leach on guitar, and Bill Perry on keyboard. The next recipient is a highly successful visual artist and a beloved teacher who has touched the lives of many young adults studying visual arts at the university level. Known internationally for his watercolors, Mr. Funderburk has devoted his life to his art and to his students. He is also the artist responsible for the breathtaking piece featured in this year's poster and program. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Brent Funderburk. so inspired by this group of people right here. I'll include you all, but I can't see you past the first row. Amazing, when I first came to Mississippi in 82, uh, first kind of courses I wanted to teach would show me about what Mississippi was. So I had one called Sea, Earth, Sky, when I found out about Walter Anderson. The curriculum committee said, say what? <laughs> and uh, then I had another idea. I said, how about encounters with art and life? We got on the road and it was raining cats and dogs for days and nights and weeks and we drove up to northern Mississippi to a little place where there was a house party going on and we're going we're gonna to see the blues, we're going to feel the blues and it was uh, Junior Kimbrough and I know it in the 1990s, there was a little drummer there. He was the best drummer I've ever heard. I got two drummer boys in my family and that was the best drummer I've ever heard and he's a pretty good guitarist too. Name was Cedric. Okay. And uh, done good. Done good. A plus in my class. Uh, my wife loves Emmylou Harris and Graham Parsons and a lot of artists uh, that uh, I later found out I was listening to Mr. Earl Poole Ball. Didn't know it, and now I do. All right. Uh, when I was in Mississippi, I did a tour of shows around the state in libraries just to to get to know people. And uh, I was on a television show at ETV. I met Peter Zabotel. And we had a good time together. Almost went into puppetry <laughs> overnight, but did not. OK. Um, so I've worked with great people. I, I'm so happy about that. And been talking with the face of 100 Men Hall. Rachel, we're going to do some. OK? We got things to do. Um, all right. I want to thank the governor and the first lady, certainly, and uh, David Lewis and his amazing group of staff and commissioners, to my shining, dancing wife, um, and to our two smarter-than-we-are boys, uh, drummers, and to my dad, who I just heard from. He'll be 99 soon, and he, he's so happy about this, and I'm so happy for him. My teachers, mentors, Janice Graham Smith, Edward Reap, Kathy Albers, and many, many wonderful students and faculty that I've worked with. Um, and I'm still teaching Encounters with Life and Art. Not, not at any institution, but in, in this universe, I'm teaching that. Uh, so my week started with, Debbie said, go outside and listen to the flowers. 
I said, what? She said, yeah, go outside, go outside and listen to the flowers. And I, I listened because I knew that it was something that I should do. And I closed my eyes, coming out of the freeze into this strange, warm, fake spring, the first one of several. And, and the Lana Cirrus was blooming. So I closed my eyes and I listened. I said, what is she talking about? Or student cars were rushing to class, going 80 miles an hour and 20 miles an hour. And I closed my eyes and listened. Her first a hum, a little buzz, bigger buzz, some purring, became a song, became almost, almost a hymn, almost a symphony, almost, not quite, but almost. What is this? It's almost music. At the back of our brains, there is a forgotten burst of astonishment at our own existence. The object of the artistic and spiritual life, said G.K. Chesterton, is to dig for this submerged sunrise of wonder. I had a dream, or rather I say I woke up about 50 years ago, and when I woke up, I'd had trouble in my life, and I went to the window to open up the shade, and I opened the shade, and I realized as I opened the shade, light coming through was beautiful. The light coming through was warm. Something else, the light coming through, I'm telling you, loved me. It was golden. Vincent Van Gogh said, I'm going to paint everything with fine gold. He said, till everything is almost smiling, said Vincent Van Gogh. Open that window, and then I close it. I said, you know what? It's cold, and I don't feel anymore. Then I woke up. It was just a dream. I went to my window, opened up the window, and said, eh. <laughs> a little bit. You know, may, maybe. Okay. If you are quiet and you take a deep breath, you might just hear what Mississippi musicians hear, what the writers uncover, what the artist sees. Yes. We are the storytellers, but we are also the story listeners. There was a nature show on television my wife and I were watching. We turned the volume off, put it on closed captions. A waterfall was showing. Closed captions came up and said, music. <laughs> I said, yeah, now we're getting somewhere. Then came a rain, rain came up. Closed captions said, applause. Yeah, now we're getting somewhere. Strange thing what art is. Almost art. I've tried to make the music visible. It is there. The stories are told in your bones, deep below, through your family, through your brothers and sisters. Almost is where the artist lives and breathes and has his being. Digging for the goal, that submerged sunrise. In one of the last letters that my teacher, my great teacher Edward Reed wrote to me, he wrote this to me. He said, my God, there are so many undreamed patterns in a small petal and all is now in bloom. Thank you. Our final recipient has spent a lifetime tickling the ivories for the likes of Johnny Cash, Merle Haggard, among many others. His career in music has been spent on stage and screen, and he can still be seen performing at the Continental Club in Austin, Texas every Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Earl Pole Ball. Now, that's Matthew Williams that helped me get on the stage there. He plays drums with me, and he's my good friend, and he came along on this adventure. 
Thank you, Matthew. He's going to play some drums with us now. And uh, gosh, I, I want to thank Charles Jenkins there and, and Leah Fortenberry Snyder very much for uh, sending in a whole bunch of nice things that other people wrote about me. My buddy Marty Stewart wrote, wrote something really nice. And, and I, I think I wore his shirt this morning. I didn't know he was going to jump in by here today. He jumped by here today to see some other folks about something. And I'm sitting there in the room with uh, other recipients here. And all of a sudden, Marty's head po pokes through the door. And just, just cosmically, I happen to have this shirt on. <laughs> and I just had found it in the closet while looking for something else before I left the house. I didn't even know it fit. I thought I was still too fat to wear it. And, uh, but it works. So that, I need to quit talking about all that. I want to thank uh, a lot of people that helped me from Marion County when I was getting started uh, in whatever I wanted to do. Uh, for a while, I wanted to be a lawyer, I thought. Steve Dale let me go to circuit court with him, all of his, all of his different uh, circuit courts. Kelly J. Hammond, the brilliant orator who was a state senator from there, he, uh, he drove me uh, uh, around to some of his uh, uh, lawyering things he was doing, and he uh, mentored me. He actually made me a page in the state senate when I was young and, uh, because I handed out some cards for him at, at, at some uh, polls polling places, and uh, I, I, I really liked him a lot. He was such a great speaker. And then there was uh, my, my favorite, uh, I guess, a lady back, back in uh, Marion County who's with us today. Miss Frances Fortenberry is with us today, Frances Neal Fortenberry. She was my school ch schoolmate back there, and she always told me to keep putting my, my best foot forward and uh, introduced me to her uh, uncle, Farmer Jim Neal, Got me on, nice, on a, a statewide television, and that was wonderful. Also, I got to go over and be on the Jimmy Swan TV show with the Booger Red McCaffrey, you know, and that all got me interested. And it seems like one one week I was I had I had studied piano with my aunt Catherine, who was the musical director at the Fox with First Baptist Church. I never, why, never knew why they said Fox with First Baptist Church because it was the only one there. But it was the name of Fox with First Baptist Church. And so I was learning how to play from her, and I played in church and did real well there and uh, was singing in the choir. And then all of a sudden, it seemed like it just happened more than a week period, but of course we know it was more than a week. But it seemed like it happened in just a week. Like one Sunday, I was playing and singing in church, and the next Saturday, I was singing and playing in a honky tonk. <laughs> Just went zip zap. <laughs> but it happened, and that, I guess that's where it's supposed to be. So uh, I'd like to thank Cliffy Stone out in California that gave me a big boost up. It showed me how to be in the real music business, and I started doing sessions out there. And as you saw, uh, on the video, which was marvelous the way y'all put that together. Thank you so much for putting that together, Council. I appreciate that. Uh, that's what, that's kind of what happened to me. Am I too loud? Or am I? Well, we'll see as we go on. And uh, so we're going to do just a, a few numbers here. I don't, I won't talk anymore. There's a lot of other people to thank. Uh, a whole bunch of family out there and uh, relatives and friends that have come a long way, but I, I won't do that. I'll talk too long. Let's uh, let's. I want to play you a little, a little, uh, little blues and a little rock and roll, a little country, and uh, we'll get through all of that because that's kind of what I do. And I hope you enjoy it. Here's a little Lordy Miss Claudy for you. Key of e. You ready? A one, two, three. <laughs> Well now, Lordy, 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 Miss Claudia, yeah, you sure look good to me. Please don't excite me, baby, I know we can't be me. Well, give you all my money, cause you just won't treat me right. You leave the ball in the morning and you don't 
come on to late at night. I want to tell, tell, tell my mama, yeah, what you've been doing to me. I want to tell everybody I'm down in misery. No more. Hey, goodbye, little darling. Down that road I go. Matthew's going to kick us off on the drums on this one. It's called the Big River Song. The reason I chose this Johnny Cash tune number, Johnny, uh, Marty Stewart and I used to play this song every night when we were working together for about seven or eight years there with Johnny Cash. And uh, this is a song that we all like to play. And it's a song about the big Mississippi River that flows right down the side of the state. So I thought it'd be an apropos song to do. about a girl on that river, ain't it always? Uh -huh. Well, I taught to weep in the willow how to cry, and I showed the clouds how to cover up a clear blue sky, and the tears I cried for that a woman are gonna flood you big river, and I'm gonna sit right here until I die. Well, I met her accidentally in St. Paul, Minnesota, and it tore me up every time I heard her draw that southern draw. I heard my dream went back downstream, cavorting in Davenport, and I followed you, Big River, when you called. Later on down the river What much there to make a round Or stay very long When I left it was raining But nobody saw me cry Big river why are you doing me this way Well I taught to weep in the willow How to cry And 
I showed the crowds how to cover up a clear blue sky. And the tears I cried for that woman are gonna flood you, big river. And I'm gonna sit right here until I die. River Queen rolling on. Take that woman on down to New Orleans. New Orleans, go on. I've had enough. Got my blues down in the gut. She loves you, Big River, more than me. Yes, I talk that a week in the willow, how to cry. And I showed the clouds how to cover up a clear blue sky. And the tears I cried for that woman are gonna put you big river. And I'm gonna ride it here until I die. Yeah, I'm gonna sit right here until I die. Thank you, Governor Tate, Mrs. Tate. Thank you so much. Thank you to Arts Council so much. Hey, Cedric, come on up here and play a song with me. Yeah. Cedric Burnside. All right. We may have to move that machine out of your way there. Before we start that song, we do want to say a very special thanks to the selection jury for the Governor's Arts Awards and to our sponsors. Yeah. A huge thanks to our presenting sponsor, Mississippi Public Broadcasting. We couldn't do it without you. Now please join me in thanking Governor Reeves and First Lady Ely Reeves. And let's give a big round of applause to our recipients. Peter Zaplatal, 100 Men Hall, Cedric Burnside, Brent Thunderberg, and Earl Paul Ball. Nominations for the 2024 awards will open on April 18th on the MAC website arts.ms.gov. And for our finale tonight, Cedric Burnside is joining Earl Pool Ball and company with Mean Woman Blues. And on behalf of the Mississippi Arts Commission, I'm Daniela Oropesa. Thanks for joining us. Keep celebrating the arts. Take it away, boys. Well, I got a woman mean as she can be. I got a little woman mean as she can be. Sometimes I think she's almost mean to me. With a black cat up and he died of fright. Cause she crossed his path by night. I got a woman mean as she can be. Sometimes I think she's almost She got shapely hips My she make my heart just thrill I got a woman mean as she can be Sometimes I think she's almost mean to me Play it again, Seth Black cat up and he died of fright Cause she crossed his path that night I got a woman in and she can be Sometimes I think she's almost mean to me One more breath I ain't bragging, it's understood Everything I do, I sure do it good I got a woman mean as she can be Sometimes I think she's almost mean to me. Playing that thing. Oh, 
for a woman Sometimes I think she's almost mean as me Sometimes I think she's almost mean as me One more time Sometimes I think she's almost mean as me 